so in the meanwhile while all this was happening i'm i'm given to assume that there were enough research on animal language that had been taking place for a very long time where animals were being taught how to speak actually not no um there were a few attempts to teach chimpanzees to speak and they failed as i say because they don't have the articulatory apparatus to make sounds right and then somebody raised the question well is it that they're not smart enough to learn language or they just lack the articulatory apparatus mm -hmm. and that's why allen and beatrice gardner um followed a suggestion of a primatologist to use gestures as a way of um communicating using american sign language right so um speech was a, those that those were the only attempts to teach animals language at that time but there is a significant tradition up until you decided to try and teach your chimpanzee a language of trying to teach chimpanzees both verbal language and sign language right well i, I try to teach sign language not, not verbal language. no you try to teach sign language but up until you started doing your experiment there were enough researchers from um oh there were kellogs and the hayes and there was one russian right i'd say maybe five or six people tried to and, and some of them did go on to make at least you i would say half baked claims that animals were speaking uh, or animals were none of them said that no none of them said that they got chimpanzees they moved the whips into a certain position and then the trainer would come and pat the chimpanzee in the back and out would come up you know or mom it was right but these were not natural sounds right. so none of those experiments were considered successful fair fair and then uh, there was th there was your experiment which you at first concluded was that the the chimpanzee was actually communicating yeah. but then you realized it wasn't that's right what what happened is i modeled my experiment on one that the gardeners did and i was very impressed by that experiment but i decided that the reports were anecdotal for example it was claimed that the main chimpanzee at the time washo um created a sentence by saying water bird while she was on a in a rowboat and passed the swan and the trainer said my god combining water and bird in adjective and noun to produce a small phrase that's language and i said well i'm not so sure because that's only one anecdote we don't know if there was any prior training on water and on bird we don't know if maybe washo actually said bird water and the trainer heard it in the english way water and bird so what's needed is a corpus you need to record everything the chimpanzee sign and uh that's what done that's what's done with studies of children language um and then you go through all the constructions and ask other orders do adjectives typically come before nouns um do pronouns come before verbs and so on and that was the purpose of my study simply to use the same method but to collect a corpus or and literally thousands of combinations right and what is this uh, particular instance that made you realize that your first conclusion about the fact that your chimpanzee nimchimski was actually speaking uh, was wrong well actually i collected more than 20000 combinations of two or more signs and i saw some very dramatic regularities i saw instances where adjectives did come before nouns where pronouns did come before verbs and i wrote a paper and i sent it to science and while it was being processed by science i made a startling discovery that the combination of signs that my chimpanzee nim made were prompted by the teacher inadvertently the teachers were so intent on getting at the sign 
that they began signing to him unconsciously before he signed. Mm. And when I saw that connection, that prompting, I realized that his signing was not spontaneous, that it could be explained as imitative of the teacher's signs, and therefore I concluded that Chomsky was right. This is not language, this is imitation. Right. And I, I guess even after you had put that conclusive dent in this area of research, there were continued researches and even claims of, of um, chimpanzees, like I think it was Coco, the, the one that appeared in a Pepsi commercial and so on. Then Coco was a gorilla trained by Francine Patterson. Right. And, and the claim was that Coco could speak language, but you maintained that there was no possible way that was happening. I, what I did was I analyzed not only my own videotapes to show the connection between the teacher's prompts and uh, NIMS um, signing, but I analyzed films of Coco signing with Francine Patterson. I analyzed films of Washoe signing with Beatrice Gardner, and I saw the same pattern. Every place I look, I saw the connection between the teacher's prompt and the H signing. And I said, if maybe if I didn't do a great experiment, maybe somebody could have done a better experiment, but if somebody wants to challenge my conclusion, what they have to do is produce a videotape that's not edited so you can see all the context between the teacher and the chimpanzee and also show that teacher was not feeding rewards to the chimpanzee signing. And if somebody can produce a 15 minute videotape showing that the chimp is spontaneously signing, I'm wrong. Mm. I made that challenge more than 30 years ago and videotape is cheap and nobody has come up with a videotape. Interesting. Interesting. I'm. It's so ironical that this entire series of experiments and research has more to say about human cognition and the unconscious human activity than it has to do of conscious animal activity. Oh, sure. There's a very famous story, and I'm ashamed to tell it, called the Clever Hans effect, where a German psychologist thought he could um, get a chimpanzee to do arithmetic. He would write on the blackboard two plus three and the horse would tap his foot five times. Right. And other people asked the same question um, and they got the same results. It took about two years to discover that the horse watched the trainer very intently and when the trainer posed the problem he took a deep breath in. And when the horse tapped the right number of times, the trainer exhaled. And then that's when the horse stopped tapping. Right. So when he inhaled, the, the horse started tapping. When he exhaled, the horse stopped. That explained the horse's behavior. I did this experiment never thinking I would get anything like that. But unconsciously, the teachers were prompting them. And when I took that out of the picture... There was no language. It is so interesting that the blueprint of all of these mistakes was embedded in this one little experiment from history that almost nobody cared to look at until you figured it out. That's right.